one drawback to rational canonical form. There are two formulations that depend on the source that you use. For here, we're going to look at examples where I go from one formulation to the other and back. So the information will be the same in each formulation. It'll just reflect different properties. Now, let's review how we set up rational canonical form. So I'll have A, an n by n matrix over some field. Our first step is to find the characteristic and minimal polynomials of A. We'll factor those polynomials completely into their irreducible factors. So irreducible factors we'll call Qs. The exponents on the characteristic polynomial will have as Ns. For the exponents on the minimal polynomial, we'll call them Ms. Then, to each irreducible factor, we assign a block diagonal matrix. For each diagonal block, we're going to have a companion matrix corresponding to the polynomial Q sub j raised to some power. At this stage, all we know is we're guaranteed a largest block of size m sub j times the degree of q sub j. Now, other pieces of information that we have that'll help. The size of the block that we're assigning to q sub j is going to be n sub j times the degree of q sub j. The number of blocks that we have is given by the dimension of the null space of q sub j a divided by the degree of q sub j. And then if I want to get a handle on the size of each block, we're going to have to look for cyclic vectors in these vector spaces here. So we'll start with the null space of q sub j, m sub j on A, and then just keep dropping the degree here one by one. That's something that takes a little bit of work. Okay, and then the proper formulation here would be to look at quotient spaces. Now, once we've set up our blocks here, we're just going to assemble all them into one big matrix, a rational canonical form. So this matrix here is going to be block diagonal, where each diagonal block corresponds to the block that we set up for each Q sub J. For the second formulation, we'll still have a block diagonal matrix. The blocks will still be companion matrices, but we're not going to sort by irreducible factor. So if we arrange our blocks in decreasing order by size, the largest block will be a companion matrix for the minimal polynomial of A. For the other companion matrices, we'll have a sequence of polynomials, say P sub J, where P sub J divides P sub J plus 1, and the largest P by degree is the minimal polynomial for A. Now, to find those P's, we just connect to the first formulation. So we'll take each irreducible factor, okay, say we have Q sub 1, we take the companion matrices that comprise the block for Q sub 1, so each of those is a companion matrix for the polynomial Q sub 1 to some power. So we'll collect all those exponents, okay, with multiplicity, arrange them in increasing order. Then, largest exponent is M sub 1, or call the other exponents by A. Now we do that for each Q. Then we're just going to multiply down each column starting with the largest exponents. So we would have Q sub 1 raised to the M sub 1 times Q sub 2 raised to the M sub 2 and so on to get the minimal polynomial of A. Then we'll go to the second largest exponents. We'll have Q sub 1 raised to the A sub 3 times q sub 2 raised to the b sub 3, and so on, to get a p sub 3 that divides m sub a. And we keep repeating. So we'll have a p1 divides p sub 2, divides p sub 3, and so on. So we'll have a sequence of polynomials. We assign each of those to a companion matrix, and then we arrange those blocks on our diagonal. Now, the main idea to go from the first formulation to the second formulation. If I combine 
cyclic factors for blocks corresponding to distinct irreducible factors, we get another cyclic factor. If I go from second formulation to the first formulation, we're going to take each block, find a cyclic factor, and then we can project along each irreducible factor to get cyclic factors. Now, our base case will have a two by two diagonal matrix with distinct diagonal entries. So I'll choose A equal to one, zero, zero, two. This is in rational canonical form in the first formulation. Our companion matrices are just one by one blocks. Now, the characteristic polynomial is lambda minus one times lambda minus two, which is equal to our minimal polynomial. So that means in the second formulation, we have a single two by two block. The coefficients in the second column come from our minimal polynomial. So I have lambda squared minus three lambda plus two. We put minus signs in, so I'll have a three and a minus two. Now, our recipe is, we are take cyclic vectors for each block, add them together, and they'll give us a cyclic vector for this block, or all of our two. Now, to find cyclic vectors for these blocks, we're gonna have to isolate those subspaces. So those subspaces that go with each block are just null of your Q to its exponent. So here, the irreducible factors, lambda minus one, lambda minus two, each has an exponent of one. So we'll look in the null spaces of A minus I and A minus two I. Easiest choices, E1 and E2, standard basis factors. Now, first vector I choose for the basis to go with this block will be the cyclic vector E1 plus E2. Let's see how we get our basis and then how this matrix comes out. So we just keep applying A. So I apply A to our V. I get E1 plus 2E2. Okay, that's just picking off the eigenvalues. So V and AV are going to be linearly independent. So we'll have a basis. Now, if we apply A again, so that'll give me A squared V, which is E1 plus 4E2. I can write that as 3AV minus 2V in our basis. Now, what's the recipe for the matrix of A with respect to our new basis? We just see where A sends each basis vector, write as a linear combination of our basis vectors, and then the coefficients are gonna give us the entries in our column. So V is gonna to go to AV. So for our first column, we have zero, one. And then AV is gonna to go to A squared V, which goes to minus two V plus three AV. So I'll have a minus two and a three. So that shows us how to go from here to here. Now, to go in the other direction, we just project according to irreducible factors. So think of it this way. I have V equal to E1 plus E2, although we could use any cyclic vector that we want for R2. Well, if I want to get back to the basis vectors I had before, what would I do? Well, if I want to get E1, I would want to peel off the E2, and I know that E2 is in the null space of A minus 2i. So if I apply a minus 2i to v, I'll wind up with some multiple of e1. So I'll call that w1, and that's gonna be minus e1. If I wanna get the e2, I wanna peel off the e1, so I'll apply a minus i to our v, that'll give us e2. And so you know these are gonna be linearly independent, and so we get our basis, which is w1, w2, not quite equal to the basis that we started with, but it puts our matrix in our diagonal form. Let's summarize our procedures before doing another example. So, first, if we're given a companion matrix for any monic polynomial, if we're looking for a cyclic vector, we always go with the vector for the first column. So, if we're working with a companion matrix in the standard basis, we have a cyclic vector given by E1, the first standard basis vector. Now, 
for companion matrix is representing another matrix in some basis. Then we go with the first vector in the basis. So we'd have something like V, A V, A squared V, and so on. V is going to be our cyclic vector. Then, if I'm in rational canonical form in the first formulation, if we want to combine blocks, so they're going to correspond to distinct irreducible factors, what we do is we find a cyclic vector for each block. We know how to do that by part one. And then we just take their sum. So that's going to give us a cyclic vector for a single block. If we want to go in the other direction, so we have a block in the second formulation. I want to break that up into blocks for each irreducible factor. What we do is we just take each of the irreducible factors applied to A, okay, to their powers, apply them to the cyclic vector, but we omit the factor that's going to go with the block that we're interested in. Okay. So I'll leave it to you to sort out most of the details, but it's really just going to be a statement about irreducible polynomials and how we combine them. For another example, let's consider the following matrix A in rational canonical form in our first formulation. So I have five blocks. We'll have two blocks for lambda minus one squared, then a lambda minus one, lambda minus two, and a lambda minus three. So our characteristic polynomial is lambda minus 1 to the fifth power times lambda minus 2 times lambda minus 3. So we have three irreducible factors. Now, the minimal polynomial is lambda minus 1 squared times lambda minus 2 times lambda minus 3. So when we go to rational canonical form in our second formulation, the largest block is going to correspond to this polynomial. So if we expand that out, we get this polynomial, and then we can set our block up. So we'll have a 4x4 four four block that looks like this. Now, what's that leave? We've combined this block with this block and this block. So we're left over with this block and this block, and we're unable to combine because they correspond to the same irreducible factor. So we'll get a block for each of these. So we'll have lambda minus 1 squared and a lambda minus 1. Now, the cyclic vectors for each block will have E1, E3, E5, E6, and E7. So for the companion matrix corresponding to the minimal polynomial, the cyclic vector that I use will be E1 plus E6 plus E7. Then for these two blocks, here I'll use E3, here I'll use E5. So we have our three cyclic vectors when we set up the rational canonical form in our second formulation. Now, with these choices, I want to change basis from the standard basis to the new basis using the cyclic vectors. So we'll have V1, AV1, A squared V1, A cubed V1, then V2, AV2, and V3. Now, how about if we want to go in the other direction? So, I want to break up our 4x4 four four block into the three blocks for each irreducible factor. So let's just focus on the lambda minus 1 squared block. And here we're going to do all our work in the original coordinates. So, our cyclic vector that we use here is going to be V1 equal to E1 plus E6 plus E7 in the original coordinates. A recipe to get our lambda minus 1 squared block. We're going to take our cyclic vector. We're going to apply our minimal polynomial, in this case, divided by the lambda minus 1 squared factor. And then we apply that to A. So we'll call this W1. Now, if we work this out, I get 5E1 minus 3E2. I'll apply A to W1. We have 3E1 minus E2. So W1 and AW1 are a linearly independent set of vectors. Now, to check that we have an invariant two plane, I'm going to apply A to AW1. So I have A squared W1. What do we get? We work it out. I get E1 plus E2. 
which is minus w1 plus 2 a w1. So we have an invariant plane because I can write a squared w1 as a linear combination of w1 and a w1. Now, note, this also tells us how to set up the two by two block that goes with w1 and a w1. If we apply a to w1, I just get a w1. So the first column is 0, 1. Then if we apply a to a w1, we get a squared w1. And then we just have the linear combination corresponding to a minus 1 and a 2. That gives us the second column. And this block will correspond to lambda minus 1 squared. Now, let's try that again without reference to the original basis. So we're assuming we're just given our matrix as follows. We're working with the standard basis, and we want to break up our 4 by 4 block. So we'll get three blocks, one for lambda minus 1 squared, one for lambda minus 2, one for lambda minus 3. Same recipe as before. We find a cyclic vector for the block. So in this case, we're going to use the one that goes with the first column, which is E1. Then we'll just apply the other factors. So for the lambda minus 1 squared block, I'll have W1 equal to our other factors applied to E1. We E3 minus 5E2 plus 6E1. I'll apply R to W1. We have E4 minus 5E3 plus 6E2. And these two vectors are linearly independent. So we have a basis for a two-dimensional space. Now, if we apply R squared to W1, okay, we work that out. We note that we get minus W1 plus 2RW1. So this vector is a linear combination of the first two. So two things from that. We have that our two-dimensional space is invariant, and we have the correct linear combination for the two by two block. So the column has to have minus one and two. Now, let's look for our eigenvectors. So for eigenvalue two, we'll apply okay, the other factors to E1. So when I work that out, I get E4 minus 5E3 plus 72 minus 3E1. So we'll check that it's an eigenvector just by applying R again. When we work all this out, we get twice W2, and that verifies the eigenvalue 2 property. Same idea for W3. Okay, we apply the other factors to E1. We E4 minus 4E3 plus 5E2 minus 2E1. I apply R to W3, and then we notice when we work it out, we get 3W3, which verifies the eigenvalue 3 property. Putting things together, we found the three vectors that pull apart this block. We don't want to change anything with these two blocks, so we're going to change basis to W1, AW1, W2, W3, E5, E6, and E7. So with that, we recover all the blocks that we had on the original problem. Now note, we're not going in the same order down the diagonal, but we can fix that merely by rearranging the order of our basis factors.